Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Well, in this tutorial, we'll learn about Flutter category selection. So here I have this uh, basic, very simple app. Over here, I have some items and you can select the items. And once you select them, it would show up here below this line. Uh, and if you deselect them, they would be gone. And you can select them from anywhere, anyway. So if you deselect, they would be gone. Uh, well, now here, let me introduce you the basic idea how to go ahead and implement this thing. Okay, so to implement this one, we'll have a first basic model and uh, model would be for our controller because in the controller, we'll use the model object to create the instance of this model that would be an object. Once the object has been created in controller, then we'd be able to use them in our view one is i would call filter view other is called selected view so filter view is over here this three and selected view would be over here like for example this one or this two and there's another view so this view is actually each of them it doesn't matter so as you can see from there so these views could be used either here when they are ready for filtering or when they are being selected over here once they're selected they're here so this is a common view or common widget that would be used by both filter view and selected view so this view is responsible for drawing a certain widget and filter view would show all the view from the list and selected view would be shown from the selected list okay so that's why we'll have two different views and this is a common view used by those two views and once again first we'll create a model and based on that model we'll create object in our controller and based on that controller we'll show all the list views or list widgets in our filter view or in this section and as well as the one selected we will show over here and this view would be used both by this one and this one so Next, once we go ahead and do programming, definitely first we'll create a model and after that we'll create a controller. Once the controller has been created, we'll go ahead and create a view and after that we'll create filter view and selected view. So this way the logic should be very clear that what and how we are going to do things. So over here I already created a basic project, very simple, the startup code and here I have this main app and my app, okay? Here is the home. We don't need a home page over here. We'll implement a scaffold because it's, this is be a very simple project. So I'll implement everything in one file, okay? Now, as you saw here, that we need to have this uh, uh, clicked box. Once we click, they would show up. So we have to persist the state of this boxes. Okay, so that also means that this widgets they have to be stateful. Well, for stateful widgets in our program, we'll use getx. Okay, so for getx, I already installed the package. So just to go ahead and write get and run get.pub, and you should be good to go. All right, so since we are using getx, we'll wrap our main app over here around getx app. Okay, so over here we'll write get material app, this one. And over here it is a property called home, and within home we'll run my app. Okay, all right, now it might ask you to import the package, so we'll import the package manually, so we'll import the whole package so that we don't need to import other sub packages now with this we are good to go now as you can see from the structure over here so here we need a column okay so the in the scaffold the body should contain a column and within column as we saw early we'll have this view and this view okay and this view would be used by both of them hopefully it makes sense so now okay now we are good so 
so that's where we'll put this one and this one but as we told talked early first we need to create a model then controller then this one then this one and this one so let's go ahead and create a model first so here we'll create a class we'll call it category okay with this we created a very basic class which is also a model okay so now we'll go ahead and create a controller and uh, we'll call the controller just controller you can call it anything you want and as we are using getx we need to import getx controller this one okay now we'll use this class model to create instance okay so would be creating instance within a map object so we'll declare map and the variable name is categories and from previous earlier tutorials we know that maps are wrapped around curly braces so that's why we have this curly braces and we also know that map has key and pair value this kind of format so our key should be object so we'll call this to create object and value will assign something we want in our case we will assign boolean properties okay so we'll come over here sorry so over here we'll create instance we'll call category and uh, as you see category first takes a name which is string we'll call it item one and here we'll assign color so the second property is a color and this is the key in our case and each key should have a value so in our case the value is false because once we initialize them they're false which means not selected if this becomes true that means this is selected which we'll see later in our application so what we'll do we'll just go ahead and copy paste them and we'll create three objects but in real world application they should be coming from most probably from json file or database file okay all right and i think i'm missing one okay so one second so this would be a map map has key and value pair so this is our key and this is the value for each key we have a value and all the values are false why are we are doing it because default the key the categories they should not be selected they should be only selected when you click on them otherwise they are not selected if they are not selected this value is false so hopefully it makes sense okay now over here we can finish like this but we don't want to finish like this because we are using getx and we also want our application to have state so our application should have state so and so this is a map we want to create a stateful map in this case we'll use obs because using obs we know that we can create stateful object in flatter using getx okay well with this we are pretty much done with this controller for now okay so now next we saw that we need to create this view so we'll go ahead and create this view so over here we'll call the view category widget so Well, the first thing we need to know that over here, this should be responsible for drawing each of them, okay? And we also saw that this view would use this one, which also means that this view would call this view. And that also means that this view would pass parameter to it. It will receive that and use that parameter to do things. So what will this view, what will send it to? it will send it to category okay the category that we created over here all right so it will send like that so it will send an object so object will have name and color property 
So we want to receive the object and once we can receive the object, based on that we'll be able to draw different color and different names, okay? All right, so that's what we want to do. So here we'll declare a variable, we'll call it final category category. So over here we'll return a container container will have height and width so we'll and now for color we'll use category category dot color because do remember that our this widget will pass category object to it and each of the category object has color as you can see from here so we'd be able to use that color okay yeah hopefully it should make sense now each of the object will also have name like as we are creating here we are passing name and color as you can see of course we are not using this one directly yet but this will what will happen eventually so we'll send each of these instance somehow to this one okay so it will send name and color so we'd be using color as well as the name okay so now the name would be as a child over here and it would okay so so far we are good and so this would be a reusable category widget so using this one would be creating these three widgets and show them over here again once it's needed okay all right so we are done with this so we are done with this model and controller and over here our category widget okay well now the next thing we want to do we want to create this filter view okay. so let's go ahead and create a class and uh, now from here we saw that this filter view will consume this controller that also means that this filter view will depend on this controller that also means that this controller is a dependency for this view okay which tells us that we should go ahead and instantiate a controller instance in this view okay so that's what we'll do now so we'll come over here we'd say controller we'll create a variable name controller and we'll instantiate the controller. We'll do get the put, and our controller name is controller. So our controller name is controller. Well, in Flutter GetX, if you use GetX package so to inst instantiate a controller, you must most of the time you do is using get dot put, and inside whatever the controller you will call that one. Okay. Now we are good. Now over here we also need a build method. So what? I'll Saves us sometimes, and I, we also need to put this bracket. Now over here, we want to return uh, our widget. Okay. Now here, first we'll return a list view controller. Okay. So the list view dot uh, sorry list view builder. Okay. All right. Now list view builder takes item builder, and actually, which means it takes a uh, function. Okay. The first one is the context so we'll put the default context and second one is the index parameter okay all right now as we are using semicolon we'll put uh, as we are using return as we are returning we'll use a semicolon over here now over here um, it has another parameter which is called item counter so that's what we'll use now item count and what is the number of item we have so we'll use this variable and from this one we can access this categories which is our map and then we'll do length okay all right uh, but in real life actually you don't really want to access like this so this would be more like a private variable okay to a controller so you don't want to access it like this so what you could do you could go ahead and create more like a public variable and in flutter dart 
public variables if they return a value so you can return them using a keyword called get okay so I'll create another variable we'll call it categories okay and this categories this variable will return whatever is here it will return that okay now once again this is a map okay so to return the values from the map first we have to get that map so we're getting that map and then you can use the property called entries and then you can map through them okay all right and we'll return the key for because each key is the object so first we are returning just the key from here and as we are using map we also need to force it to be a list so that we can use them later one by one okay in a for loop so now instead of calling this one directly we can call this one okay anyway so if you don't know what is map and map and list you can go ahead and check the tutorial below in the uh, description section i put a link so it should be helpful so anyway from here first we want to just return the key okay so now we'll come over here our category filter instead of this one we'll just return categories which is this one okay all right so because we are using get so this field so this is more like a field now see from this field we can access the values inside this categories okay all right so we are going through the loop and uh, accessing one by one and then we put them in a list so that's what it means over here so now let's come over here okay now over here uh, let's see well we said early that each of this will use this view so now this view is this view over here this one category filter so we can go ahead and use this one inside this and how do you use that okay well definitely we can do return and call this category okay so that's how we'll use it so we'll call here category widget all right but we also said that early this category widget should take a child okay yeah because each child would be coming from here now because of this one we have access to the child or sorry the object of category over here okay so we can access them so we need to pass it to this one okay how do you pass it so we can create a property here so we'll call it category and over here because we are looping through them using index over here so using index we can access them each of them okay now this will have an error because it's not defined here so we can go ahead and create a constructor over here we'll call it category widget okay so well as i think we are creating a constructor we don't need the light keyword now so now with this we are almost ready okay so now we need to find a way to call this category filter then we'll be able to see them okay so now where we can call them from we can call them from over here okay so we'll just go ahead and simply call category filter so this one so we'll call this class okay all right now we should go ahead and run it so it's starting so if you go ahead and run it you might have this error okay that's saying that this list builder doesn't have any bound which means it doesn't have any height okay which is more like unlimited so that's why we are seeing this error so what we could do we can wrap it around over here another widget and uh, we can call it say a flexible widget flexible widget okay now let's go ahead and run it and see what happens okay now here we are with this okay so it already showed up so so far uh, we created this model over here based on that model we created this controller and within controller we have this map object and this map object is being returned from here okay the map that's created are being returned from here and that map 
is also being accessed from here so we can draw them one by one all right so but now it, it does look a bit ugly right now over here we'll fix that soon okay but we want to show our checkbox over here okay so not really directly this category widget so what you can do we can wrap it around another widget this one and first here i'll write check box list tile this is what we want this is flutter's default uh, widget i guess so that's what we are using okay now over here it takes values and on change properties as well as it takes the other one which is called a title and now our title would be more like this widget over here okay if you hover over on it you will see you will see it has this value it has unchanged and it is a title but title is a widget so you can put a widget here so this is the widget we'll put over here so now it does take a value okay and it also take on changed function so for now we'll not do anything with the function we'll keep it empty okay and let's see it's saying that it should take a parameter if you hover over on it it will tell you the same thing so it takes a bool parameter okay so that's what we should have now over here it's also undefined let's try to set it to false okay so this is what we have now so now we will do, we'll go ahead and run it so now with this our check box is ready over here okay now it's too much to the top so what we will do over here maybe So now what do we want to do? We want to be able to click on them, okay? We want to be able to click on them, but now as you see, we go ahead and click on them, nothing happens. All right, to be able to make them click on, so we need to work on a few things. We need to first be able to toggle the value, okay? Over here, this value. So this function is responsible for toggling value, okay? And uh, whatever you, toggle to it'll reflect here now just now everything was false you can set it to true and let's run it so now everything is checked but we can't toggle it because we can't change the value okay so now we are hard coding this but of course this is not what we want okay so we want to toggle them over here so this is the function where the magic should happen okay all right so what we can do but here we can access this value whatever the value currently is there it will have this okay this is one thing we can do we know and we can access this but we also know that over here each of the object they have a default value which is called false okay so we can access this one or this value over here for this key we can access this value right okay so what we could do we can somehow access this one and toggle it and at the same time if we can return the value over here then it would be dynamic so now our purpose should be accessing this value whatever the value is there try to access it and as you click on it it should change and once the change happen it should reflect here okay so here we want to write a function okay all right but now we already know that we have access to this one okay so what we could do we can create a method in this controller and we'd be able to access that method using this instance okay so now at the same time what we will also need to do we need to send the object uh, our this object to this controller okay or the controller should be able to certain object because remember here because of index we are able to access certain object since it's going through a loop so definitely we can access each of them in a loop okay as we can access we'd go ahead and change them so now what we'll do we'll come over here in this controller and here we'll create a method and we'll call it uh, toggle method and it won't have any return type and each of them will have category and uh, which means this one okay all right 
Okay, now we are sending this one over here. So we can look for this object inside this list. If we can find it, we can change it because remember, inside this, this object, they are in key pair value, okay? Yeah, so what we'll do, we'll go ahead and first uh, try to access them, access here within this. So we we'll do categories item. So this, this variable is this one. Once you write like this, that means you're accessing the object within it, okay? All right, so if you can find it, then whatever the value is there, you toggle it. How to toggle it? It's very easy. So you can just do negation, okay? But if you can't find it, just use a random value, which is a true, okay? Because initially we'll think it was false, but now we are sending because we couldn't find anything. So we'll just set a random value. This is for just for safety issues though, right? And then you want to save that value. Where to save? In categories dot categories item. So once again, what's happening here? So this is a method. This method takes category item, which is just this object, okay? Or this object, actually they are the same. Now we look for in this map, this is our map. If we can find it, we toggle them and then we save it over here, okay? All right, so for this one, we save this boolean value, which is mean it would be saved here. If it's found for the second one over here, second one's value, it gets and toggle it. So every time you do like this, actually you are accessing the key. And for each key, we said early, we are saving a value, okay? So this is the value for each key. Anyway, so now we are ready. So we'll come over here here we'll call here we'll call controller dot toggle this one and now over here we can send our object okay so remember as we are in a loop so this list builder is more like a loop so we can send the object like this okay now let's go ahead and run it make sure there are no errors so we have this function we would be able to toggle the value okay but where to see the toggled value actually we can come over here this function and uh, over here we can print we could do categories item okay now let's go ahead and run it and if you click on this the, remember all the default values are false if we click it will take the current value and negate it. So which means it would be true because the default value is false. So now if I click on this, this is true. If I click on this one, this is also be true. If I click on the first one, this would be false once again. Okay, so it means the value toggling is already working over here. All right, yeah, so that's good news. But of course, even though it's working, but we don't see the change over here it doesn't change that's because we, as we said early that this value is now fixed so the next step is we need to find a way to show the value over here okay so we already learned that we are toggling the value and this value has been being saved inside this so once you toggle it the values are changed over here so now we need to access them in the list okay we need to access all of them and see which of them are being toggled or not. And after that, based on that, we'll be able to change the value, okay? But before we go ahead, I think another thing we could do first, uh, set it to false because in general, the default value is false, okay? Because in general, they're not toggled or clicked like this. Okay, now they are gone. Okay, if you click, this is still working. Anyway, so now we need to find which of the values are being changed. And to do that, over here in the controller, we can declare another method, uh, another property, and we'll call it selected 
categories. Okay, now this is an arrow function over here. I'm not going to talk about that one. Arrow function, just you return in one line, that's what we know. Now over here, we need to access this one first. So we'll do this one, and then the property entries. And then once again, here we'll check conditional check using where. So th there is this variable or parameter element. So element would be accessing each of them, okay? But now with where, you just be able to access and check if it is true or false. So what it does, it checks the Boolean, okay? Boolean property of a given value, if the value has Boolean property. But we know that our map has key and pair. But pair is Boolean, right? So we'll be able to access the Boolean property. How to do that? We could do element dot value, okay? So you can, once you write element at value, it will find this one or this one or this one, okay? All right. And now if it is a true, if this value is a true, and which in certain case would be once we toggle, right? In that case, it will continue to execute more statement if there are. So now we want to write more statement and we'll write here map, okay? Now over here, the one being true, conditionally checked true, that's being accessed here. And we access that one. And that key we access. And then we save it as a list. So we do to list. If you don't do to list, it will not work. Again, check out the link below. What is list and map and why it do like this, okay? I'm not going to talk on about this in this tutorial is the long talk anyway so here what we're doing we are accessing each of them from here in a loop and first we do where condition where condition only checks the conditional boolean statement check on a certain object that also means that if a map has boolean property it will access that and see if that is true or not if it is true it will continue otherwise it will just return from here and if it continues, it'll convert them in a list and save it. So now after this whole statement is being executed, the result would be saved here. So we can access this one, okay? Now, as I said, this will, this will just have the values where the values are true, okay? Those objects are being saved if the values are true and once we toggle on them the values are being changed true to false so if they're true they'd be reflected here eventually saved here okay so now here we can access them okay so how can we access them here so we do controller dot selected this one okay well now if selected we want only that one matches so if this selected contain so there is a field which is called contains all right within contains we could call one second controller dot categories index okay so what's happening here so this selected takes each of the object and check if this one contains this one well there are three there could be two well if those two matches with the two over here so those values are true and if those values are true this would be ticked here otherwise they won't be ticked okay so for example if you clicked on this one immediately over here one of the objects value would be true and it goes through in a loop within this contain method and once it finds that one certain object because remember it can also have access uh, the related object key and value so if it finds this one now this whole condition over here would be true if it is true it will mark here as a true okay hopefully it makes sense anyway so now we'll go ahead and run it and we'll see 
you click on this the logs are being printed as you try to toggle it but it's not reflected here why just because we are in somewhere like this is called stateful thing it has a state and states are being changed but it didn't trigger it well as we are using flutter getx we can wrap this whole list widget list view builder within obx so once you put something within obx and if you have obs variables inside it if there are changes it'll make the changes automatically and reflect the new drawing on the screen so now what we'll do we'll go ahead and run it okay now let's click on this yes now it's working so what obx does make it reactive responsive to the changes on the screen well the next thing we'll see how to put the selected list over here okay all right to put the selected list over here we'll create another class down below it and that class would be responsible for showing the selected list well showing the selected list over here would be a breeze pretty easy for us because we already have done pretty much all the work all we need to do go ahead and create a new class so because we are instantiating the same controller and if you use get.find it will find the same controller in our case this controller okay so get that put you just need to use once in your project in general anyway so now over here we want to create a build method well so now it's good all right so now over here what you could do we could just go ahead and call this list view builder. It would be the same as pretty much this one. But we need to make slight changes. So over here, instead of getting everything in the category, we just want to get the selected categories. So do remember, we have the method to get the selected categories, this one. I mean, the get, get property actually, it's not a method. So we'll come over here, we'll just paste this one over here and we should be good to go. Now, inside this, actually we don't need any of this, okay? We just need this one. We can just over here return category widget. And category widget takes category, we know it. And we can send each selected category instance in a loop over here using this index okay now the error is gone mm, let's see we are good okay so this is fine over here and we also want to create a height over here Here we'll call selected categories this one okay now let's go ahead and run it okay perfect well, let's click on this so it's down there it showed up click on this it will show up once again so it means our category selection is working okay now a few other things that we can take care of over here I think we can wrap this around a padding widget Perfect. So our category selection is working. So that's how it works. So the basic idea of category selection is that over here, you need to keep track of the one. That's the total list and the other list, which is after being selected based on the conditional check. 
okay and the other one we also need for toggling the values once you toggle you immediately save the values within that key so these are the basic ideas that you should have okay so hopefully you learned something and if you did don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button thank you so much